Hi everybody, Rochelle here from Quebec Sécurité. Today I'm going to show you how to fix a canister filter, whether it be leaking, whether it be noisy, making bubbles, or just simply stopped working, you're going to learn how to fix it in this video today. For this demonstration, I'll be fixing these three canister filters. So in these three canister filters, uh, these two have been leaking. Yeah, they have a lot of issues and we're gonna be fixing more than one thing today on these. Leaking is due to the seal that has dried up and doesn't, well, seal the filter anymore. If you're taking a filter that's been in your garage or in the closet for a long time, the chances are that the seal has dried up and you're gonna have to change it. This one has been hanging around for a while and it doesn't leak from the seal. Don't worry, it's got its own set of issues that we're gonna look at later. For the Fluval, I took the liberty of doing it before I got the idea of actually making a video about it, but the marine line canister will have to change that. So let's open it up and see what's inside. So here it is, I have this funky angle. You're gonna need a seal from your local fish store. They can usually get them for you. If they don't have them in stock, they can usually order them from their suppliers. So the seal in this case is right here all along. Before changing it, you can try, if ever the seal is expensive, some filters have very expensive seals, you can get some uh, silicone and just put it all around. You have to take it out and put it around and in some cases that will work. In this case, I've already tried and it's hard to take out, so just get a little butter knife and boop, pop it out. Okay. So this is going in the garbage. In this case, for a reason I cannot explain, the new seal is transparent. So it doesn't change anything, it's just kind of weird. So you just put it back right on. Don't look at the camera when you're putting it on. Look at the seal. You won't do weird things with it. Et voila. So we just changed the seal. Let's put it right back on. I forgot to, that's why there was an extra spot. This was supposed to be inside. This is what the inside usually looks like. I found it looked weird. Oh well, demonstration's done. Deal with it. Sometimes you gotta force it a little. There you go. While it's usually the, the big seal that your, your filter leaks from, uh, there's another reason why your filter might leak and that is from the valve block or the aqua stop or whatever the company calls it. They all have a different name for it. Let's call it the valve block. So that is the case for my Eheim. Hooray! So for my canister filter, I put the lubricant on the old seal. Well, I was so happy that it wasn't leaking, but it still was leaking. And it's only then, well, obviously before I was filming this video, so I don't have the demonstration, that I found that it was leaking from the valve block. This part right here that goes in front. What happens is that when we're too rough with our filters, well, sometimes they can break if we play with the, the tubing too much over many years, not overnight, you know, but over many years, you can loosen up and it will break. So that's what happened with my canister, Eheim Professional 2. It breaks from here and this part comes right off and it leaks like crazy. So this is an easy, more expensive fix than the other seal, but it's an easy fix and you just buy the valve block from your local fish store. If they don't have it for your canister filter, if your filter is available in the region, well then of course they probably can order it for you. Sometimes though, if you order a filter uh, from say big online websites and it is a filter that's not available, well it happens a lot here in Canada. People order them from the States and they're models that aren't even sold or aren't even held by any suppliers here. So we don't have access to the parts. Buy from your local fish store and they will be happy to, fit, to help you. So just plug it right back on. There go and just close it up. That's it. It 
So these filters were leaking and well, they shouldn't be anymore. I ordered all the right parts. So we'll be setting them up at the end of the video on the aquariums of the Fish Store Extreme Makeover from last week. Did you recognize these filters while you were watching the video? Did you even watch the video? If you didn't, you should go check it out. It was really fun. Hey, you gotta see my filters in action. A noisy filter will often make a rattling sound, sort of like this. So this is a pretty easy fix. So let's open this up. So this is what it looks like once it's open. Uh, it's pretty much the same for all filters. We have a impeller cover, which holds the impeller in its place. Uh, for this model of Fluval, this is a Fluval 404. So the 404 and the 405 are renowned for this part breaking. When it breaks, the shaft gets loose and it doesn't hold the impeller in place. It usually will break around here or here and, well, you can just see it with the naked eye. Not in this video though, because this is my new one. So you just change that part, really inexpensive at your local fish store. Fluval. All right, so to take it off, you have to sort of wrestle with the impeller here, which was well stuck. So if that part was intact, we're going to go underneath. Underneath you have the shaft and the impeller. Check if your impeller is intact. Oops. This is a new one right here, so it holds. And if I pull, nothing happens. Here is a broken impeller, which looks normal at first. You'll look at it. Everything's fine, but that's broken. That means that when it starts to spin, it just takes off. And while your filter makes noise, it doesn't work anymore. Next, if all those are intact, check the shaft. If you put it in, does it hold? If it doesn't hold, you might have to change your whole head, meaning that the hole has gotten very loose. This is very rare that it happens, almost never. It can also mean that your shaft is broken. This is a ceramic shaft, it'll be cut in two. So just buy another one at your local fish store. So now we're gonna put everything back in. So this in first, the little rubber at the bottom, there's a hole to fit it in. Put it in very tight. The new impeller, not the broken one, so it holds. Wouldn't that have been awkward for a demonstration? And finally, the impeller cover, that'll hold everything in place. There we go. In the Fluval 06, it can also break. It's a lot more solid on the sides, but if it breaks, it'll be in the middle here. So make sure you notice if, I'm so lazy, I didn't even take it out of the wrapping. <laughs> Just notice if it's broken here, you'll, it'll be cracked. If that's the case, you're gonna have to fix it. Before fixing this canister filter, I had the impeller and the impeller cover that were both broken. So needless to say, the filter was not going very well. Let's put the head right back on. If your filter has just plain stopped working, you opened it up to clean it, and when you plugged it back in, nothing is happening. Chances are it's probably your impeller that's broken, that's the most common. There is also a chance that the shaft has sliced in two. If these two break, uh, they will either rattle, or in most cases, they'll probably just stop working. So check those out before considering buying a new filter. You can also check before changing it that you filled it up completely before starting it. Of course, if it stops in the middle of working, well, then that's different. But if, it's, if you plug it in and it doesn't work, maybe you just didn't fill it up enough and it doesn't have enough pressure to be able to bring out the water. So make sure when you start it that the whole box is filled with water. In the worst case scenario, once the filter gets old, well, it's true that the motor head might burn out. If that is the case, uh, check with your local fish store. You might be able to order just the motor head. Some models are available. It'll cost you a bit less than buying a new filter. Of course, like I said, it's not all models that this is available for. So if you're lucky, you can order the motor head, but chances are you might have to get a brand new filter and we'll scavenge this one. Keep in mind that motor heads will probably break after over 10 years of use. So if your filter is pretty new or like three, four, five years, it's probably not the motor head. It's probably just the parts that have broken. 
Is your filter making bubbles? Well, that's usually an easy fix. If it's not leaking, if it's leaking, that just means air is coming in. Uh, well, it probably just means that you didn't start it up right. There are these little primers on them, but that's not how you start a filter. To start the filter, you have to literally siphon it. You put the intake in the water, the outtake in your hand, and you just siphon the water so that it fills this up completely. The whole box has to be filled before plugging it in. And don't forget to put the outtake back on the aquarium before plugging it in. If you filled it up just enough, but there's still some water missing, that's when you get bubbles. And usually uh, that happens when we don't siphon it out enough. So when that happens, I unplug the filter, take out the outtake and bring it lower in a bucket. That way it'll siphon out all the air and then you just bring it with the bucket right on the aquarium. Plug your filter back in and you shouldn't have any bubbles. If you, you plug it in and there's still bubbles, wait at least 30 seconds to a minute before taking any drastic actions. It's normal that it evacuates its air. So let's go start these filters in my new aquariums that I'm setting up in my Fish Store Extreme Makeover. So my Marineland filter is going on my 180 gallon Alto Lampologus tank. I wanted to add more fish in with them, but I only had an AquaClear 110 on that aquarium. Since there weren't many fish, it was okay, but I couldn't possibly add any more. I do not have enough bacteria. So I'm gonna add that filter and wait till it cycles a little bit. As I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of bubbles in the beginning. That is completely normal. Even in this case, there's a bit of gunk that came out from some biomedia that wasn't completely clean. Since I have another filter in AquaClear, it'll just be picked up and it'll clear up very soon. As you'll notice, I'm not using Eheim tubing. I'm using some old API Rena tubes because, well, I actually had the Eheim tubes, but right before the demonstration, well, I lost them. Keep in mind that filter tubes fit on all filters. It's a pretty standard size. For Eheim canisters, there's usually a little clip that comes with them, but, well, I didn't have mine, so I'm just using these metal rings. I'm bringing the outtake lower to make it easier for the filter to start off. Once it's started though, the pressure is really strong. Well, this intake and output look ridiculous. We're gonna have to change it. Ah, uh, there we go. That looks better. This is the Fluval canister, which has some odd rigid tubing. Rigid tubing is not the best. It's kind of hard to work with. No! What have I done? So, it's not set up yet. Um, it got a little bit awkward when the tube I wanted to use was breaking the uh, aqua stop. So, basically just what I'm trying to say is <laughs> use appropriate filter tubing. I don't know, it was there before, so I figured, well, it had to have worked. Didn't work. Whipped myself in the face with it. It fell. It, ah. I just couldn't get any more, so I went and found some old fluval tubing. This is the tubing that goes with the filter, so it's gonna work this time. So obviously, this happens to me every time I try to make a demonstration. Never works out like I planned. Things break. Let's fix this filter. It works. Despite it being broken on top, this, yeah, the other tubing broke uh, part of the aqua stop. The, most of it is intact, so it's, it's gonna hold. And if it doesn't, well, then I'm gonna have to continue this demonstration forever and ever and ever until I get it right. All right, so just siphon it out. Just, let's go through here. Take the outtake always, not the intake. That's, that's where it's, you're siphoning from. Okay. Close the valve. Just breathe in that, um... Oh god, that's disgusting. Breathe in the algae. I think it's full. We're, we're good. Well, no, because if we bring this down... Siphon out. It's not... Alright, well, just plug it in and see what this does. Probably spray everything, break my camera. We'll see. Because I'm really 
really crazy unlucky in demonstrations. You, see, you should see the one where I fix that aquarium streak. I'm pleasantly surprised. Okay, wow. So no water came out, so I'll have to siphon this disgusting thing again. So it's being weird and not working. So obviously it's not working. It never works. Demonstrate. Let's see what was happening inside. Just no water. I don't understand. Oh, there we go. Just figured it out. It's not siphoning because, genius me, I put where it has the siphon higher than where the intake is. So, this is a new mistake, seriously. Like, I should have known better. Here it's siphoning. Siphon. Well, I hear it's siphoning, but it's not going fast, so. Put it lower. My demonstration, oh, there we go. I see the, see the bubbles coming out. That means it's siphoning. And this demonstration get, just got really ghetto because like I'm holding the filter on my lap. It's not even on the table or anything. Let me try. I'm gonna break something. When you have a caster, it's better to put it under the aquarium. But in my case, I'm gonna put, be putting it equal to aquarium level. This place is gonna be in the back. So it'll be a little bit lower. Hopefully things will hold a little better. Nothing's holding. It's just to show you that it's not leaking and it's working. Oh yes! Woohoo! Victory! Oh my god, look at that. No bubbles, a little bit of bubbles. That's just emptying its air out. It'll do that for about a minute. Don't freak out. So the demonstration is done to show, so I'm gonna go and set it in its real place behind the aquarium after. But as you see, I changed the impeller, the shaft, and the cover, and I had to change my knowledge of gravity, or just remember good old knowledge from high school. <laughs> it works. This is not gonna hold. I'm gonna need to fix the outtake just so it holds. It works and looks so much better like this. So that's it for today. I hope you liked this video and it was able to help you with your filter misadventures. Do you have any misadventures that happened that were fixed by a way that was not in my video? Tell me about it in the comments. I'd love to read it. If you like my video, I, there's plenty more where that came from. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I post new videos on every Thursday. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and I have a great website where you can shop online and see all the fish I have for sale. I ship throughout Canada. So thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.